Abu Dhabi Classic FM, quarter past nine, breakfast classics with Damien Watson. And the Abu Dhabi Classics International Concert Series is back after a three-year break. Run by Abu Dhabi Tourism and Culture Authority, TCA Abu Dhabi. The 2014-15 season, which will run until May next year, will be dedicated to the theme of The Traveller and will feature some of the world's best musicians and orchestras. It all begins tomorrow evening with a concert at Manarat al Sadiat by the French pianist Lydie Solomon, dedicated to Chopin's travels. Now, Lydie is a world-renowned pianist, I'm sure you know, who last year introduced a new programme dedicated to, to me at least, little-known links between Chopin's music and that of various Cuban composers. We'll come on to this in a minute. It's called De Chopin à Cuba from Chopin to Cuba. Now, de Paris à Abu Dhabi. Bienvenue, Lydie. Comment allez-vous? Très bien, merci. Thank you, Damien. <laughs> Maintenant, nous parlons uh, anglais before I embarrass myself terribly. <laughs> Would that be okay? <laughs> Welcome to Abu Dhabi. It's nice to see you. When did you fly in? I uh, arrived yesterday night. Okay, and you're here for the concert tomorrow. Exactly. And it's going to be the music exclusively of Chopin uh, tomorrow. Before we talk about the concert, though, let's talk about your career. Um, you're uh, a seasoned veteran and you're still very young. You began playing piano when you were two years old. That's right. Was that something that you just did naturally or did your parents encourage you? Well, I think it was kind of, kind of both because uh, there was a piano at the, my parents' home. Were they and, musicians? Uh, not at all, actually. But all right. my mother rented a piano to see how I reacted <laughs> uh, towards the instrument, and I was uh, clearly attracted by it. So I um, I used to to play melodies by, by ear, and uh, the the composer, my favorite composer, since I wasn't uh, still in the my uh, my mother's womb, <laughs> was Beethoven, and so when I heard the Ode to Joy by Beethoven at two years old. I played it, and uh, this was the beginning of the story, no? <laughs> you played that at two years old? Yes. Really? Exactly. <laughs> do, do you remember playing the piano at that age? No. I I mean, some people do have memories of sort of two or three years I old. I don't remember that episode, but I remember playing the piano when I was quite young, very young, maybe five. But uh, no, th this anecdote I don't remember. <laughs> I, I believe them. <laughs> well, you best to always believe your parents. Exactly. Uh, you gave your first recital at the age of 10. Uh, you then entered the Conservatoire in Paris, where you studied under Professor Jacques Rouvier. You won the first prize of the conservatory unanimously in 1996. Uh, you believe uh, I believe you first played with an orchestra at the age of 13. Yes. Is, do, you, do you prefer playing with orchestras or do you prefer solo recitals? It's too different to compare, but no. really those are experiences, uh, wonderful experiences, but very different. Um, it's like a, a communion with the orchestra when you play with an orchestra. So you have to find the pace to, to, be, uh, to, to breathe um, together. But when you're in solo, it's, I mean, it's, um, it's a great experience too, but it's very different. I love both. You've played all over the world, and the theme of the Abu Dhabi Classics series is The Traveller, so very appropriate here. Do you find that your interpretation of different pieces and uh, the work of different composers changes when you go to different parts of the world? Is there a certain, maybe an expectation from the audience or a certain feel to a place that makes you change? the way you play? Well, that's true. That's a good question because, um, you know, I just, um, I'm just coming back from a tour in Mexico, actually. And, uh, you know, Mexicans are very passionate and uh, full of um, expression until the, 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 the extreme, you know, and um, their music is a testimony of it. And when I, when I toured Mexico, I felt that, ex that extreme expression, which, um, and I got impregnated of that and I think the way I played, especially Mexican music, because I learned how to play Mexican music there too. Um, yeah, I, I, I was influenced by that. So I like to be, um, to, uh, and also I like to listen to the music of the language I'm, uh, uh, of the country I'm staying in. So this is the first time I've had the chance to, to visit an Arabic country. And right. it's, it's, uh, I am very excited about that because I, I love to hear the, the, lang the, the music of the language and I'm sure it's going to inspire me. But, I mean, the expectation of the audience, uh, 
for sure it's different when you go from a place to another. But still, I mean, people are um, always expected to be moved. And, uh, and my dream is that, to, 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 to play the music that moves people until, the, until uh, maybe tears or laugh or uh, at least... What I would like is that the audience, when they get back, up, go go out of the venue, would feel different, a bit different. Tomorrow night's venue is wonderful. It's the Manarat Al Sadiat on Sadiat Island in Abu Dhabi, and the opening concert of the Abu Dhabi Classics series has completely sold out, which is fantastic. However, we have kept two tickets in reserve here to give away to Abu Dhabi Classic FM listeners, or one listener. And I'm going to pose a competition question in just a few minutes. So if you'd like to win these tickets, you'll need to be paying attention after we hear from Lydie Solomon with Chopin's Nocturne number 20 on Abu Dhabi Classic FM. Well, why on earth has that just... Computer failure at key points. What a delight. I'm sorry about that, Liddy. I was enjoying that, too. That was Lydia Solomon performing Chopin's Nocturne number 20. Will that be on the, uh, the, the programme for tomorrow? Actually, it's going to be the first piece I'm going to play. Well, there you go. In fact, you can hear it then properly. Exactly. Performed live at Manarat al Sadiat tomorrow evening. Liddy Solomon is my guest this morning, opening the Abu Dhabi Classics series tomorrow. So that pair of tickets, Liddy, will um, we'll give away quite soon. Let's talk about Chopin then. He wasn't the greatest traveller, was he, Chopin? Born in Poland, we know, became a French citizen, spent some time in Germany, I know. But where else did he go? Did he ever leave Europe? No, actually. Well, uh, the his soul and his music left Europe, but he never uh, left. Uh, no, he 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 went from Poland to to Paris, mm -hmm. going through uh, several countries. But you said that he was not a great traveler. That's true because um, he didn't want to leave his native land. He he cherished it so much, but he had to leave Poland at the age of twenty, just after he composed his uh, nocturne we were listening to. Um, uh, and when he left Poland, he, he didn't know that it was the last time he'd seen he'd see his uh, cherished uh, land, and uh, so he left Poland forever when he was twenty. He went through. He the, left before the uprising, didn't he? Shortly before the uprising, I think. He was quite an ill man as well, Chopin. He, he, exactly. he was. All, he died young. And he was always quite unhealthy. So I guess that's not yeah. conducive to travelling. But no, but uh, he was. He was attracted by. He, he, you know, the, the paradox of Chopin is that he wanted to, to reach worldwide fame. So that's why he left Poland to, to conquer, conquest the, the world. But the, the, the sad story behind that is, uh, you said it, it was just before the uh, absurd, the Polish mm -hmm. absurd against the Russian that he left Poland. And uh, when he learned, he learned that the, the absurd had failed, he understood that he would never go back to Poland. So he understood that he he had lost. He was an ex, in an exile, and um, and the the the, the cynical uh, anecdote about, uh, behind that is that when he 
arrived in Paris uh, in September uh, 30, he uh, 31, sorry, he didn't, um, he, 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 he wanted to reach the, the, the worldwide fame, but uh, he found himself trapped with Polish who flee who had fleen just from the the absurd so it was quite cynical because he wanted to fly away from and he find himself stuck with them he he, so. he did go to uh, to mallorca i know to spend some time and that's that's quite a complicated love story which uh, yes. is is that do, do you when you when you're playing tomorrow evening will you be telling the stories behind the music and what inspired the particular pieces that you're playing i really know uh, okay. i'm not going to to talk to the audience but uh, the audience will have programs right uh, in which you have the storytelling and the storytelling is very important because between each piece I have to get impregnated with the, the, the state of mind the, the, the country the, what he was experiencing at that time so it's very important you're right but uh, thanks to uh, the TCA who do things very well we have a very uh, beautiful programs where you can find all the story and the dates of the, okay. of the journey so he spent some time on Mallorca and uh, was quite ill uh, I think that was a few years before he died, then went back onto the European mainland. But I want to explore this link with Cuba that I mentioned at the beginning of uh, our interview today. And um, your album, uh, From Chopin to Cuba, what is that link? I wasn't aware of any links between Chopin and the music of Cuba. Neither was I. Ah, right. <laughs> but the, the thing is that he, he never went to Cuba, of course, but his music went there through his very dear friend, Julian Fontana, who was uh, his one of his dearest friends from uh, childhood, and um, Julian Fontana was a man who helped Chopin a lot, uh, copying manuscripts, sending them to uh, publishing houses. He helped him in uh, very different matters. But one day he decided to leave by himself, and so he went to Cuba in 1844. And when he arrived, his first recital he gave uh, was um, composed of Chopin music. So he did not have that much success with Chopin's music because it, it was too new. And people said, yeah, it's beautiful, but I have to listen to this uh, another time because it's so, so uh, innovative. They didn't understand it. But he met a little a, a young genius, a 12-year-old uh, genius called Nicolas Ruiz Espadero, who composed this Grande Fantaisie Cubaine, which is on the CD, and who caught this genius. And he... Uh, he got impregnated with his uh, genius, and he he um, he was influenced by uh, by Chopin's uh, language, and so he mixed the Cuban style, Cuban rhythms, with Chopin's music, and you have this influence which uh, still lives on today because you you have this uh, great uh, famous uh, group called uh, Buena Vista Social Club, yes, which is which they are influenced by Chopin's music actually. Okay, let's hear a short excerpt from your CD. Nicolas Ruiz Espadero, the Grand Fantasy Cubain. 
uh, played by Liddy Solomon from her album From Chopin to Cuba. And Liddy will be opening the Abu Dhabi Classics concert series tomorrow at Manarat al Sadiat for the 2014-15 season. Flew in from Paris yesterday, spending just a few days here in Abu Dhabi, Liddy. Although you are going to Alain on Wednesday, aren't you, to the exactly. Garden City after the recital tomorrow night. Um, to uh, to host a masterclass, a piano masterclass at the yes. university. That'll be fun. Yes, yes, I'm looking forward to it. Is that something you, you, you do often when you're travelling? Well, yes, in Mexico I did it too. I gave concerts and then I, I gave uh, also masterclasses in, in Spanish, <laughs> in Mexican. And it's very interesting to see how uh, young people perceive the music in different countries. I love that. You studied, among others, under Jacques Rouvier, as I mentioned earlier. He's reputed to be quite a hard taskmaster. Is that true? Well, he's very demanding, but I think uh, without working a lot and a lot and studying a lot, you cannot achieve anything. So it's a, it's a good thing to be demanding, though. No? And when you teach piano, are you quite demanding too? <laughs> well, yes, but, you know, the most important thing for me is that to look how I can help students to to be happy. Because if you're not happy when you play the piano, it's, uh, it's not worthwhile uh, playing in front of an audience because you have to make them happy. And if you're not happy, you cannot make others happy. So, um, yeah, blooming and happy, I, I think it's, it's very important. With but studying a lot too. Yes, constant practice. Exactly. Um, and that isn't always fun. You, you have to sometimes do the basics and do, do... It's a bit like going for a workout in the gym sometimes. You can't always lift the weights you have to go for a run and sometimes you don't want to go for a run yes. and i guess there must come a point in any uh, international musician's career where you say actually I, I i need a break from this and you had a break didn't you, you had a career break for for three years i believe yes why uh, why is the name i chose <laughs> during my break <laughs> lady why when i chose to um yeah to stop my career to step back a little bit and to to rethink, um, to think how I could express myself freely without people telling me what to do, what to play, when, how, with whom, you know. Uh, when you start the piano at two, you're not, you're not mature enough to choose by yourself. And it's, very, it's terrible when you choose your passion and then people choose it instead of you. So they, it's, it's as if they stole it from you. So I had to, yeah, during three years I um, explored uh, different uh, forms of uh, artistic expressions such as uh, move acting. So I uh, became an actress and I, uh, and I, I played in long, long movies and uh, TV dramas uh, and uh, commercials as well. And I sang and I composed. I wrote uh, novels and I, yeah, I needed to, um, to express myself in different ways. And all these experiences led me back to the piano three years later, but in a totally different state of mind, because I, I had found my freedom. But destiny called. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a musical pun. Um, time is against us, Liddy, and I know you have to get on as well. Um, what we're going to do, I'll, I'll direct people to the website for uh, more information generally about the Abu Dhabi Classics series. Abu Dhabi events dot AE or Ticketmaster dot AE or call eight hundred triple five. As I've already mentioned, the concert tomorrow night, the recital tomorrow night is sold out. But we do have a couple of tickets to give away Wonderful. here on Breakfast Classics. I'll do that in a minute. But we're going to finish uh, with a piece of your own because you compose your own music as well. And uh, I thought it would be nice to hear one of your own compositions called En Vocation. Tell me about this. Avocation is like a movie for me uh, and uh, probably influenced by in my experience as an actress but and storytelling as well. I like to tell stories in music. So this is, we, we are going to listen to it and maybe the listeners can uh, express uh, what they feel better than I because Lady. each one has to, to express oneself. Merci beaucoup. Bonne chance à demain pour le concert. Merci.
of Liddy Solomon, who'll be performing tomorrow night at Manara da Sadiat, that her own composition, En Vocation. Tomorrow night, the music of Chopin, Chopin's Journey, starts at 8 p.m. prompt, but you need to be at the venue by 7.30 p.m. Dress is national dress or smart business dress. And as I mentioned, it's sold out. So before you start protesting outside the studio that we've teased you too much about a concert that you can't attend, we do have a pair of tickets to give away to one lucky Classic FM listener. I gave you the answer to this question earlier. Let's see if Gina Peach was paying attention. Don't tell me, though, Gina. <laughs> On which Mediterranean island did Chopin spend time in the 1830s? I did mention this earlier. 3546... And you've only got 20 minutes to get in touch this morning. 3546, please include your name when you send your SMS. Make sure you're available to go tomorrow evening to see and hear Lydia Solomon perform the music of Chopin.